A Step into the Past Volume 25 Chapter 10 Book 25 Chapter 10, The Takeover of Xian Yang That very night, Xiang Shaolong sought an audience with Xiao Pan, indicating his desire to send Jing Jun and his troops back to Xian Yang in order to reinforce Tang Yi against Liu Biwei. Without any grounds to deny his request, Xiao Pan agreed on the spot, giving Xiang Shaolong the opportunity to openly and fearlessly make preparations for shipping and logistics. Early next morning, Qin Qing paid Xiao Pan a visit too, professing that she has received Empress's invitation to stay in Dachun Palace for a few days. Not suspecting anything and coupled with Qin Qing's insistence, Xiao Pan gave his permission. Disguised as Wu family warriors, Qin Qing and Ji Yanran were escorted by another eight authentic Wu family warriors. Together, they unabashedly strode out of Kainian Palace. Along the way, they rendezvoused with Xiang Shaolong and they jointly concealed themselves among the entourage of Jing Jun. After hiding their carriage in an inconspicuous location, they immediately left the city and boarded their ship. Sailing along the current and aided by a favorable wind, they arrived at Xianyang in half a day's time. Landing at the predetermined shore, they waited for an hour before Tang Yi, Tao Fang, and Xiao Yuan came to pick them up. Noticing the presence of Qin Qing and Ji Yan Ran, the welcoming trio is exceptionally thrilled and their morale is boosted to a higher echelon. Tang Yi chuckled, everything is prepared and we are simply waiting for great general's leadership and instructions. Xiang Shaolong laughingly threw a punch at Tang Yi's beefy shoulder, declaring, even second brother is making fun of me, I'm sure you are feeling really happy. Presently, we only have a two-day window. Thus, we must act at once. Ji Yanran questioned Xiao Yuan, any news from Manager Tu? Xiao Yuan answered, Master Tu, his family and his 300 loyal brethren are prepared and in position. Once we give the word, they'll drug the water. Teng Yi advised, it is critical to time our attacks well. As Manager Tu is doping the wells, we have to simultaneously seize control of Su Shang's imperial infantry. This is to ensure a safe passage for Manager Tu's family and followers. In addition, it will prevent old traitor Liu from eluding our capture. Xiao Yuan sighed, this is precisely the limitation of the anesthetic. Due to its strength, the drug will take effect almost immediately. The only way to maximize its effect is to apply the drug at dinner time. Nonetheless, it is difficult to tell how many would fall prey to it. Jing Jun proposed, if we secretly besiege Imperial Uncle Residence, Liu Biwe will surely fall into our clutches. Xiang Shaolong checked, is Manager Tu aware of the secret tunnels of Imperial Uncle Residence? Xiao Yuan explained, during the construction of Imperial Uncle Residence, Master Tu is undergoing the lowest point in his career. Merely responsible for purchasing building materials, he does not possess the slightest knowledge about this aspect. Xiang Shaolong mused, in this case, we have to deploy some signaling outposts outside the city. I, Unless we have Crown Prince's royal decree, we are unable to prevent him from leaving the city. Furthermore, it would arouse the suspicions of our Imperial Cavalry Lieutenants. As a result, it is better for us to pursue him with our own forces. Turning to Qin Qing, Xiang Shaolong instructed, Sister Qing can now proceed to your residence under the escort of Master Tao. After selecting your followers, the rest of your staff should be fittingly dismissed. Upon completion, you should head to the farms at once and await patiently for our good news. Affected by the calm before the storm, Qin Qing bit her lower lip and nodded once. As Xiang Shaolong's heart is flooded with tenderness, Ji Yanran questioned Teng Yi, recently, did you uncover any traces of the adversaries? When she mentioned AA adversaries, everyone knew that Ji Yanran is referring to Wei Liao and his army of 40,000 soldiers. All the eyes are now centered at Teng Yi. With a bewildered expression, Teng Yi remarked, I am equally baffled as there is no indication of their existence. Xiao Yuan made a guess, presently, we are in a race against time. In my opinion, Wei Liao and his forces should be camping further upriver. Once he receives Ying Zhen's decree, 
he can easily sail to Xianyang within a short span of time. If we move fast enough, we can depart Xianyang long before the arrival of Wei Liao. Not giving a hoot, Xiang Xiao Long excitedly hailed, It's showtime. Everybody enthusiastically affirmed his words. Still disguised as Wu Guo, Xiang Xiao Long entered the city and headed to the Imperial Cavalry Command Center. Resuming his original appearance, he simultaneously summoned the lieutenants of Imperial Cavalry and Palace Guards who had stayed behind to fortify Xianyang. Displaying his tiger seal, he proclaimed that he is acting on the orders of Crown Prince to return to Xianyang in order to regain control of the three armies of Xianyang and guard against any potential uprising. Of course the lieutenants are aware of Liu Biwei and Lao Ai's working partnership. Moreover, Xiang Xiaolong has always been Crown Prince's confidant and his personal standing is unmatchable. Coupled with the appearance of the Tiger Seal, they are fully convinced and pledged their willingness to fulfill their duties even at the cost of their lives. Once he completed his deployments, Xiang Xiaolong and his companions raced towards the Imperial Infantry Command Center. At this time, the lanterns are in the process of being lighted. Within the city, the ambience is tranquil and there is nothing out of the ordinary. First of all, Xiang Xiaolong ordered the palace guards and imperial cavalry to barricade the command center before personally barging in with Teng Yi, Jing Jun, Ji Yan Ran, Xiao Yuetan, and his other compatriots. Before the sentries could sound the alarm, they are overwhelmed by Xiang Xiaolong and his men. At this juncture, Su Shang was having a discussion with his lieutenants in the main hall. Caught unprepared by Xiang Xiaolong's gate crashing, he did not even have the chance to react when his life is already threatened by more than ten crossbows. The countenance of Su Shang and his lieutenants changed at once. This Shang K No. 1 swordsman did not even have the opportunity to pull his personal sword out of his waist sheath as this invasion is simply unforeseeable. Especially when Xiang Xiaolong should logically be at Yangdu. Maintaining his coolness, Su Shang demanded in a deep voice, Great General, what do you mean by this? After his men have disarmed Su Shang and his lieutenants, Xiang Xiaolong displayed the tiger seal and broadcasted, General, I, is acting on Crown Prince's orders. From this second onwards, the Imperial Infantry shall fall under my jurisdiction. Who dares to disobey? Witnessing the tiger seal, Su Shang realizes that he is stripped of his military authority and is now a powerless commoner like before. The lieutenants stared at Xiang Xiaolong with a dumbfounded expression. Noting that he has the situation under control, Xiang Xiaolong directed, except for Commander Su, escort the others to prison. When Su Shang is alone, Xiang Xiaolong took the main seat and ordered Su Shang to sit down at a side. After retrieving Su Shang's Imperial Infantry Seal, Teng Yi and Jing Jun left the hall to begin their takeover of the Imperial Infantry. Su Shang bitterly smiled, You have won. His words carrying a double meaning, Xiang Xiaolong plainly state, This is predetermined fate. I, Xiang Xiaolong, am just acting my part. Ever since Liu Biwei poisoned and murdered the late king, that traitor is destined to suffer a terrifying demise. The problem is, is Brother Su concerned about your personal consequence? His eyes flashing with hope, Su Shang wondered in a deep voice, Will Great General be willing to let me off? Xiang Xiaolong chortled, Brother Su should know that I am not a ruthless killing machine. Even Guan Zongzi and Third Mistress have been spared by me. Right now, they should have arrived in Chu. Brother Su, what future would you choose for yourself? Learning that Guan Zongzi has failed and has fled for his life after being released by Xiang Xiaolong, Su Shang broke down. He sighed, Great General is truly peerless. What do you want from me? Xiang Xiaolong negotiated, Once Brother Su reveals Liu Biwei's emergency escape route, I will immediately escort Brother Su and your family out of the city. Whilst Su Shang is contemplating and hesitating, Xiang Xiaolong prompted, if Brother Su still wishes to hear Lan Gonga Yuan's angelic voice, you must come to a quick decision. Ji Yan Ran gently reminded, even if Liu Biwei manages to flee from Xian Yang, certain death awaits him. Brother Su had better not let this opportunity slip by. 
Xiao Yuan plainly announced, I am Xiao Yuan, brother Su should have heard of me. Su Shang stared at Xiao Yuan with amazement, didn't you die a long time ago? Xiao Yuan viciously snarled, if I did not fake my death, do you think Liu Biwei will allow me to live till today? Do you really believe that Liu Biwei appreciates you and your talent? As a subordinate of Liu Biwei, you are nothing but a pawn that he can kill or abandon at will, do you understand? Su Shang finally conceded. He disclosed, inside the bedroom of Imperial Uncle, there is a secret passageway that leads to a huge mansion along Bai Tong Street, near the south of the city. That's all I know. Xiang Xiaolong eagerly stood up. After waiting for nearly ten excruciatingly years, the time is finally ripe to take the life of his arch-nemesis Liu Biwei. As Xiang Xiaolong and his men lay siege to the passageway exit, every single one of them is feeling perplexed. Four hours ago, when Tu Xian led Jing Jun, Teng Yi and their troops into Imperial Uncle Residence, they discovered comatose individuals strewn all over the property. However, they are unable to locate Liu Biwei. He has evidently made his escape through the secret tunnel. Furthermore, there are no reports of Liu Biwei leaving the city, could he be hiding in Xianyang? That does not make sense. Jing Jun proposed, let's conduct a complete sweep of the city. We'll definitely trace him. Tu Xian advocated, why don't we search this empty residence first? If my presumption is correct, there must be another secret passageway from this residence to another property or warehouse near the city wall. From there, a final tunnel will lead to an exit outside the city. Teng Yi immediately gestured to his troops and they rapidly began searching. Ji Yan Ran sighed, if this is true, we have lost the game by merely one move. Unfortunately, our signal outposts are only paying attention to the travelers leaving Xianyang City. Xiao Yuan suggested, Trader Liu cannot bear to part with his treasures and valuables. Additionally, traveling through tunnels is much slower than traveling on roads. Why don't we take a gamble? Let's assume he has left the tunnels and is traveling by foot towards the borders. I am making this conjecture because Xianyang's river routes are under our control. Xiang Xiaolong decisively ordered, cease the search. Let's leave the city at once. Xiang Xiaolong, his companions, and 200 over Wu family special forces members rode swiftly out of the city and in the direction of Zhao. In the blink of an eye, they discovered footprints about one mile away from Xianyang city. Some of the footprints are very deep, indicating a heavy load on its owner. Xiang Xiaolong and his followers are ecstatic. Jing Jun frowned instead, judging by the footprints, there are more than 2,000 of them. Their strength is way above ours. Teng Yi scoffed, for someone on the run, he is surely lacking in courage. In addition, part of their group is made up of women and children. There is nothing worth fearing. In a serious demeanor, Xiang Xiaolong indicated, within the family warriors of Liu clan, there is no shortage of experts. If we were to catch up to their tail, they may learn about our strength and engage us in a fight to the death. Although we may not lose, death and injury cannot be avoided. It is not a feasible plan. Ji Yan Ran recommended, if we can somehow estimate Liu Biwei's flight path, we can take advantage of our horses and speed to overtake them. From there, we can ambush him and confront him head on. As this technique will not betray our strength, the odds are more favorable. Tu Xian is best acquainted with Liu Biwei's affairs. He deduced. Judging from the direction of the footprints, they should be fleeing towards Wuchang City, a developed city that is situated downriver from Xianyang. The city mayor is Liu Biwei's trusted confidant. From there, they can board a ship and sail towards the east. Otherwise, with their mere feet, how far can they run? Teng Yi enthusiastically cheered, and route to Wuchang is a valley named Windstorm Valley. To reach Wuchang, they must travel through it. With our horses and including a detour, we can easily make it to the valley within four hours. Why don't we wait there for the esteemed arrival of Imperial Uncle? Xiang Xiaolong burst out laughing, you reap what you sow. 
if not for Master Tu Aa taking care of old traitor Lu for so many years, we would be the ones leaving with our hands empty. Tu Xian chuckled, it's nothing. General Teng, please lead the way. With sky-high morale, the two hundred-odd riders raced off like a gust of wind.